Lovely. Lovely. <laughs> hey guys, welcome to that pedal show. Dan here. Mick here and Dave Lennett. Yeah. From, Univers yeah, from Universal yeah, Audio. Go. There we go, there we go. Yeah. Um so we have had a very privileged, unusual, exciting Unbelievable, extraordinary yeah, day. So as, as regular viewers will know, we recently switched our recording gear to uh, Universal Audio and, okay, the guys are sat in the room, so <laughs> it's going to sound a bit ass kissy, but it's changed, our, it's changed our world in terms of the depth and the dynamic range and the experience we have with recording audio. It's enabled us to do things. So UA are about to come out with, or maybe by this video, by the time this video comes out, a new product called Ox. And David was in the UK. And we said, well, okay, instead of coming on the show and just doing it normally in our little room, why don't we go to some average studio we can find, <laughs> you know, anywhere. Some guy's, you know, what do they call it? Backroom studio in his house somewhere. And uh, actually do some proper recording. It kind recording. of, you know, it is Peter Gabriel's backroom studio. <laughs> <laughs> this is what this is. We're at Real World Studios and it is immense and we've Aww. had the great pleasure today of plugging in and playing we tracked a couple of tracks um and here we are at the end of the day having had that experience so david thanks very much for doing this my pleasure it's great to be here with you guys. um i think it would be good to start off with explaining what ox is ox is uh we we call it the the amp top box it kind of rolls off the tongue ox the amp top box um and basically it's a box that you plug the speaker out of your amp into and then come out of it right into your speaker and then you can also go into your recording rig or you can run out of headphones and basically allows you to get everything you possibly ever wanted to get out of your tube amp. So it's part attenuator? Yep, it's first and foremost a big part a reactive load that allows you to attenuate so it actually loads your amplifier like a speaker, it's not just a, like, a, like a load box, it's a reactive load box, so it's actually changing impedance and doing all the cool stuff that a speaker does, and that's what makes it feel great mm -hmm. to yep. us as guitarists, like plugging into it. Um, it allows me to turn the amp down, so I can... We can talk over it. Yeah, I'm not even gonna put the uh, vocal mic, uh, the amp mics up at this point. Yeah, that's just the that's vocal it, mics. right? I can still keep it up. Or I can turn it down completely and plug in headphones or come out of my line outs here. And right now we're going into the speakers here in the studio. And the iPad is basically, it's connected Wi-Fi to the aux. This is showing us what model is in is in the aux because in addition to being able to turn the amp down here once i turn it off completely i have universal audio's own physical model up right now of basically the same speaker and cabinet so when, when you say model though we're not modeling the amplifier the amplifier is, is you know it's um for the guys who watch the uh, attenuator show same concept working as, a, as an attenuator, this is simply modeling the speaker cabinet. It's sort of like saying everything after your amplifier, right. from the speaker out. After that, we're modeling everything else. Right, okay, so, awesome. So it goes into a speaker, mm -hmm. or a, multiple speakers in like a four by 12 or something, right, where you've got, and, and it's a physical model of a speaker. Right. It's not just an impulse response. So it's changing over time as you're playing it. It's actually, um, you can actually change settings on here that I'll show you that'll make it the speakers seem like they're newer or older. Can you just, uh, I'd love to know a bit, a bit more about that. So an impulse response, uh, yes. which is something which technology that we've been, you know, lots of people are saying it's, you know, it's the, it's the way to do things. And mm -hmm. this isn't that, right? This is, you've done something different. It's different in that it responds um, to what the speed what the, the amplifier is putting into it over time like a speaker will if you're pushing it harder yep. you'll get cone breakup right if you're pushing wow. it um, with certain notes when I, I can show you a couple models mm -hmm. here where it actually does cone cry where you get this lower harmonic that happens <laughs> that it happens in you know with real amplifiers yeah right? 
And those are things that you don't get out of an impulse response. Okay. So it's this sort of level of detail you expect from universal audio when we model like a Neve, you know, or a, or a Fairchild compressor or something like that. Mm -hmm. But now we're bringing it to speakers, speaker cabinets, the microphones after that cabinet, and then even the room that that amp is in. Wow. Okay. Can we hear some cone cry? <laughs> sure. We can do that. So if we go right in here, we've got this, this deluxe. I can flip to a bunch of different cabinets here, but let's see. The first one that I know has cone cry is this uh, AC30. It's a, a model of an AC30, like, you know, 212 with Bulldog speakers. Yep. And even if I actually, if I go to the list, it'll say this open back combo has sub octave cone cry at high G sharp and C notes. So if I take the speaker drive, so probably turn off some yeah, effects. So it's just the delay, to, yeah, so the trim off, so we just yeah. got. And I will actually show here, I'll add a little bit of room because all of a sudden it got very dry. Just a little bit of room, I can bring up a little more. So That's instantly nice. sort of a recognizable, yeah, yeah, yeah. sort of an AC30-ish kind of a vibe, right? But you can change the room? Can change the room as well, yeah. That's so I can actually awesome. take the dampening off and take the little rug out of there. And so right now I've got the speaker drive kind of low, so it's right. like a newer, harder feeling speaker. As I turn it off, I get more of a vintage speaker feel. And I think it was... Can drive the amp a little bit more. And you can you can pull up old <laughs> multi tracks you can find of like old vintage rock tunes and you know, all kinds of stuff and solo guitars and you hear that stuff. Yeah, it's yeah. there, you know. Um, so again, that's sort of that level of detail, which you hear it very specifically there. Mm. But just like anything else, it sort of it, it interweaves into the harmonic content as you're playing. It's what makes it real, right? It's that kind of stuff that you don't get. Yeah, because I think um, in terms of guitar amps, anyway, uh, Dan and I have always been. Uh, you're not great fans of, of digital modeling and guitar sure. amps because yep. you lose a lot of that, all the stuff we love about about tube amps. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But we're not, just to make the point yet again, we're not modeling the amplifier, we're modeling everything that happens after the amplifier. Yeah, yeah. Well, so, you, and, you know, I love that. So you still you still need this. It's, it's reacting with the amplifier. Yeah. And I love that. Absolutely. Great. And, and you've got all your pedals. Yeah. You've got all your tube amps. But what you're doing is you're taking the part of it that many people don't have a space that where they can play an amp loud. Sure, sure. Yeah. Or even if they did it, that it would sound any good, or know how to mic up an amp really. Mm. Yeah. Right. So with this, it's sort of this curated collection of microphones placed in the right places. That our yeah. our product manager James Santiago is just a nut about collecting old mics and where to mic it, and just he's just a tone you know guru basically. And he's sort of created this, this, this world where you can, it's just all in the right spots, you know? Uh, I, I have a question at this yes. point in time. If, uh, I, I can see how this is awesome for guys with uh, um, digital audio workstations or, or door, see me branching out now, yeah. door. That's a new word for um, <laughs> But if you, because I, you know, I, I don't really use that stuff at home, but can I take that and play it into like my little, Bose stereo, or do I need studio monitors to do this? No, you can just use headphones. And so any of these um, uh, combinations of cabinets and microphones, I can save them to this rig knob, right? So if I flip through here, I don't actually really have any presets I know of in here, but... One by 10 roomy champ, so it's like a little late. Yeah. <laughs> 
super roomy. Sounds like a little eight inch speaker, right? Flip it here. Now all of a sudden. Flip it again. This is that two rock cabinet that you guys were using earlier. That's the model of it, right? Nice thick. Right? Any of this you can get out of your out of the headphones, right? It's got reverb built in as well? Yes. So, so sorry, because you were just checking that to see if we had anything I, on. And I was going, no, there's nothing on. That's yeah. just the guitar. So, but That's the cool thing awesome. here is I've got my cabinet turned off. I don't even need this. I could have these presets set up. I plug in to my pedals, into one of my, my favorite tube amps, plug into this, throw in some headphones. I've got the headphone out here. Um, if I don't have reverb, you can hear this actually has a dedicated room knob, which you see this move as I turn that. So now... One nice thing to do actually is just turn down the mics and then what does it sound like when you've got a room mic up? So really it's it's sort of everything after the amp, yeah. right? And, and that's really in, in many ways one of the hardest things to, to capture on mm -hmm. your own um, and one of the things that you really need a dedicated space for as well. You know, so yes, you guys are saying, you know, you're not really into using models and all these things. Well, we're at least taking it back to that point where it's after the amplifier, mm. you know, you've got your, your collection of guitars and pedals and amps, and then you can plug into this. And without even running through your, your, into your studio, you can do it just through headphones if you just want to practice and jam. Yeah. I like, it. so it's the first time we've seen Ox today and we, we spent the day using it. So we tracked to, two tracks, um, put down three or four guitar parts on each track. And uh, we had the mic, the amps mic'd up in the little ISO booth over there. And we took signals from the microphones and also from Ox. Throughout the whole tracking session during the day, we were listening to Ox back through the monitors, which was great, could feel everything, could hear everything really nicely. Without having gone through the user interface yet, it seems like you've been very selective in terms of what's in there. There's not eight million options. No, it's it's happy days. Yeah, no, I mean that, I think it, it's seriously, it's that's awesome. Good because okay, from good. from a um, someone who likes buttons and knobs, yeah, it's, you know, one of the things that's always um, held me back from going, you know, too deep down the rabbit hole with this stuff is just the millions and millions of permutations of stuff. I'm like, Paralysis. I just and, and I plug into an amplifier and I turn up and I go, well, that's what I want. That, there it is. I just turned that knob yeah. and magic happens. Mm -hmm. You know, trying to have to go through menus and that sort of stuff to try and find that. Yeah. And uh, this seems that you've got 16 cabinets and, you know... Se 17 cabinets. Um, actually, you can, I can show you the list here. Just flip through them. I mean, there's a bunch of 4x12s and with 25s, with 80-watt Celestians. We even have these white 75s, which are these Alltech Lansing speakers that Randy Rhodes used. So there's a lot of variety here. Um, 4x10 Bassman, um, the Alnico fif uh, 50s, I think is a I get her Johnson speaker or something, AC30, um, Blackback 30-watt Celestians, Twin, Vibrolux. I mean, it, it's a whole bunch of stuff here. But yeah, 17 total. And then, you know, you, you've got a bunch of different microphones here. So, and you can see here, like this SM57, this is like, James Santiago going through dozens of 57s for years right. to find the right, you know, um, how do, the right okay. vintage one that how he likes that the most. How does that work then? How, so how do you take the sound of a microphone, or, or not even the, sorry, not the sound, but the reactance, the, the dynamic content of a microphone, and put it 
in an app that we can just go, oh, I'll have that today. That blows my mind. How was the Earth created? <laughs> yeah, no, I know. It's like, I, I, I know that in terms of you look at what Universal Audio has done in doing Neves and Fairchilds and the APIs and all of this, these things that we've sort of, you know, that we've done over the years, I honestly, you know, I don't know technically how we do right. it. I just know it sounds great, yeah, <laughs> ultimately, yeah, yeah. right? I kind of don't want to know other than that I know we've got some of these, you know, we've got these, but, but it's a combination of having the guys who do the physical modeling and then having the right product managers who really know the gear and right. love the gear right. and live the gear. It's like what like you guys do. Like you just dig into it and sort of, you know, and, 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 and find all of its quirks and find the things that you think are best. And that's really what this is. You know, if you look at this, this 421, it's a vintage 421. And this is a model of a vintage ribbon 160 here, and that's because that's what most of the time Hendrix's rig was was mic'd with. You sure. know, so it's very yeah. specific about you know in terms of what that is, and you've got enough choice here where you can use any of those um, six microphones um, on or off axis. So I can flip this, and you can see the mic actually turn off axis there. Um, then you've got EQ for each of those, so you can go in there and tweak that with this sort of graphic style EQ, you can even go deeper, treat it like a parametric, and then come back to the graphic after you've set your cue points. Um, and then, on top of that, because we're Universal Audio and this is what we do, um, you've got the same EQ over the master, and then you've got a compressor. So I can go here and grab this 1176, turn it on. grab a delay and add that post as well because a lot you know you, you've got plenty yeah. of great delays in your pedal but some of times you want it post it has a little bit of feedback and modulation um, and then of course played reverb expect nothing less but what's what's interesting to me hearing this so when, when I mix the audio for, for that pedal show I'm kind of doing that with the various microphones we have placed around the room when we record and it's uncanny that I'm kind of hearing what I hear in my headphones out yeah. of those studio monitors because for anyone who doesn't do it regularly guitar sound out of studio monitors can be quite weird right if you're used to stood next if you're used to standing next to um, guitar speakers belting at you it can take a minute just to get used to studio monitors when we were in germany with gitcon we we were struggling it's really, weren't we? because uh, it certainly was there's yeah, a bunch of frequencies there that you don't really understand as a guitar player but that i mean all day today and that if you've never heard a deluxe reverb on 10 that's what it sounds like yeah except we're sat here kind of talking over it yeah. yeah, and it is literally on ten. Yeah. yeah. Well, and you know, the cool thing is, again, I can still just turn off that line out and get that Lux Reverb on ten. And you know, even that, a lot of work went into making sure the EQ is right so that when you turn it down it doesn't get too dark and it's not too wildly different it just it, it feels right yeah yeah the reactive you know? load part of the part of the um, yeah. attenuator yeah and you know an another thing that I think is worth mentioning too um, is that it, it'll do that where I can have that So 
so if you so want to do a playing, wet dry rig, yeah, but or if you're playing live, yeah, you have that on your amp and you send that to the sound guy. Oh yeah, and dude. Well, so that's awesome. You can have the, your presets there and know, oh, I love this sound. And when you walk into your local bar to play or even a nice sized venue and the sound guy, who's a sound engineer, um, you know, drapes an SM57 over, yeah. your, uh, over your amp after he goes, is that one speaker or two speaker the there? Of the baffle with yeah. Gorgeous, yeah. <laughs> right. Or puts it on the head. Watch the head. <laughs> you know, because it's never going to sound good. Yeah. Sure. But you know that what you feed the, the, the front of house at that point is going to sound great. Yeah. Oh, you know? that is... Oh, sorry. I mean, the, the studio stuff and everything is amazing, but the, the live application has just yeah, yeah. got me. I mean, there, there, there may well be people watching at this point going, you idiots, this, you know, there's plenty of products out there that kind of do this already. It's, it's something that Dan and I have never really liked enough to get into yet, so I feel this is probably the beginning of a, of a journey mm. for us. But to be immediately, to immediately want to make that journey now is... is is a different experience. We, I think part of the reason we came here today, um, you know, if in, in this environment, if it doesn't sound great, it's going to stand out, you know, mm. and, you know, we've, um, and we've, we've played through, well, nothing quite like this, but, you know, things that do similar jobs and they're great, but they're, they're always a slight compromise, you know, mm -hmm. um, whereas, there was, I mean, just tracking today. Yeah. It was, yeah. you know, I, I'm not going, oh, gee, that sounds good for an emulated speaker. No. You know, I was like, okay, that's, that's my sound of the monitors. Awesome. Yeah. Interesting. Doesn't, a... solve, doesn't solve the jet lag guitar player playing <laughs> into it. We, we, got back but... from, we got back from the States yesterday from seeing Analog Man and uh, Rift City. Hello to you guys. Um, so, yeah, there is a bit of jet lag. But... I can't wait to hear the audio. I cannot yeah, yeah, wait yeah. to hear what we've recorded and just dig into it a little bit and uh, and get there. Okay, so, right. Ox is a reactive load attenuator. Mm -hmm. It is mic and speaker and delay and reverb modeling yeah, and we're compressing. It, yeah, we're calling it dynamic speaker modeling okay. because it really does. And, and a lot of this, I think, is, is from the guitarist standpoint, the... The reactive load, the dynamic speaker modeling, even the way the, the dynamic room um, emulation that we're doing is so much about the feel mm. of it. I think that's why you'll get those names. But yeah, reactive load, dynamic room uh, speaker emulation, dynamic room emulation, and just, yeah. Everything that happens after the guitar amp. Everything that happens after the guitar amp. As you can imagine, I'm in a slight state of a million questions and slight confusion. So I think the best thing to do is probably let's just play a bit. Let's get some sounds up. Yeah, yeah. Twiddle yeah. some knobs. Awesome. And uh, see what happens next. Awesome. Yeah. Little telly. <laughs> Little telly whacking. Okay. Take a little bit of the yeah. I want to take a little bit of the top end off that, and maybe compress it a little bit more. Get the compressor on. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you.
cue on it now. So let me turn that off and see what that does. Let's try that. Strat and have a go because that's awesome. Okay, I'm. It's not every day you get to hear a deluxe version on ten, because obviously that's that's undoable, as it were, in a in a home environment. So I'm kind of I'm interested in if we dial the amp down to kind of the sweet spot, which is I guess somewhere between five and six in it on a deluxe, maybe four and five, yeah, just where five. it starts to hair yeah. up a little bit. Yeah. reverb work on that. So we go. Yes it does. By ten. So I, because I, I heard it get a little it bit sizzly. It's kind of on sizzly top. thing, but it's kind of a cool bluesy thing. If you try the four by ten, it's kind of interesting. Uh, I've got the analog man fuzz on there. I will leave it on.
it's a bit bloody convenient. <laughs> it's it's going to sound a bit bloody convenient, this, but it's not every day that I'm going, yeah, yeah, put, the, put those speakers on again. In fact, that doesn't happen. And I, okay, we're in Real World Studios, so they put the... About massive. 58 yeah. million pounds <laughs> worth of awesome uh, monitors and everything else that goes with it. So, you know. In the most incredible room. You would hope you it's, it's going to sound good. That's the thing about this is that you flip through things and you just find yourself getting lost in the tones and it's inspiring. And that's not what you expect. Right. Right. It sounds exceptional. It really does. It really does. Do you want to hear something else? Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I want to hear the. Um, have we heard. We'll do like a four by twelve. Yeah, thing. let's let's um have a bit of a sh bit of fuzz and schwang into the four by twelve. Four by Interesting aside, if you heard it get really sibilancy there, we've, we learned something when we went to Analog Man, and that is if you put a really decent buffer after a fuzz pedal, it gets really sibilancy. That's right. Which is what happened there. Mm. Sorry, so, I just, I, I just no, 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 no. So the solution is put the delay there. Yeah. Put the delay here. And a quick, quicker delay time. Quicker delay time. By quicker. That's it. I just want to play it. It's it just, you know, I'm not there going. I'm not I'm not feeling anything in the way of me playing. Yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah. Well, it's uh, quarter, quarter to ten and at night, and Dan's not going. Can we go home, please? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no sleep till bedtime. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Okay. Uh, thank you so much for oh. coming and hanging out and uh, and organising this amazing day. No, thank you guys for. For, for all this and for bringing me to real world. <laughs> it's just awesome. It is nice. Yeah. Okay, so there's, there's, hopefully by the time you get to watch this video, there will be, we'll have listened to the track, we'll have done some editing, we'll have been in and out, we'll have learned more than we know right at this moment. But blimey O'Reilly, what an interesting day. And uh, I think the beginning of some new avenues for us, Dan, would you mm. say? Mm. At the very least. Yeah. yeah. Okay, before we go, uh, some quick thank yous. First of all, you normally do this. Okay. To, uh, let's see if we can do it the other way around. All right. Here we go. Brace yourselves. <laughs> to our preferred exclusive retailers in the USA, it is... Riff City Music. Hey, guys. We had a blast with you. Thank you so much. Uh, in the UK, it is... Anderson's Music. Anderson's? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. And uh, in Australia... Pedal Empire. Nice. Three for three. Three for three. Thank you. In the hoop. Um, also, thanks to everyone on Patreon, all our patrons on Patreon. Yes, thank, uh, thank you, you guys. guys. And also, as you'll see, we've got some new stuff. If you want to go to the thatpedalshowstore.com and purchase yourself an ashtray or a bear hat. 
swish. Yeah. Cheers, guys. Thank you so much once again. A massive thank you to David for coming on today. And uh, my pleasure. Totally thank awesome. You very much. All right. Uh, thanks again. See you next week. Bye Cheers, bye. guys. Bye.